Hey friends, welcome. Today I'm going to go over the engineering design process for VEX, which is the main process you're going to be using to plan, design, and build your robot. This is the thing that you're going to use to generate all of the content for your engineering notebook. So let's just get right into it. What is the engineering design process? The engineering design process is a series of steps engineers use to solve problems. It helps engineers get from a problem to a solution. It's super important in VEX, just like it is in the industry. So what you're going to do with this is to just follow the steps and document your progress, and that's going to help you get just from the game reveal to an actual solution in the form of a robot. One thing to be aware of is something called shortcut iteration, which is basically a shortened version of the engineering design process, and it skips a lot of steps. It's really common when you're trying to go back through the engineering design process and don't have enough time to go back and do all of the steps, or when you want to see results quicker. What that does is it actually reduces the quality and accuracy of the results you get from the process, and it could cause you to go in the wrong direction. It's a lot less thorough, and it takes a lot more experience to pull off successfully. So let's just get straight into the design process. Step zero, make a plan. <laughs> this is probably the most important part. You always want to have a plan when you start out doing the engineering design process. It'll help you organize your time and make sure you're on track to, you know, go through all the steps and hit all your deadlines. Some ways to do this are to make a group calendar or make a Gantt chart in Excel or Sheets that you can check back to. Make sure you're documenting your progress regularly in your notebook. Step one is just about defining the problem. So how do you play the game? How do you win? You're basically going to be reading through the game manual, appendices, figuring things out about the game in order to help you create a strategy. Some important things to find out here are the scoring rules and the actual gameplay and specific game rules, which will help you identify the ways to go when you're trying to make a strategy. Also, figure things out about the game that you wouldn't have been able to figure out just by reading the manual. Go in there and conduct some real tests. After that, come up with some strategies. You want to make at least three of them to satisfy the rubric requirements. The next step is about specifying requirements. So this step is about figuring out your priorities in building in order to make your strategy happen. In order for your strategy to work, your robot will need to be this fast, this light, and it'll need to have a grabber or an intake or something else. Make sure that you're organizing these by importance so you know what you need to focus on first and what you need in order to be competition ready as soon as possible. You're you're going to be thinking about all of those things and making testable scenarios for your built designs to see if they can do your strategy or not. So you're going to want to identify thresholds like 2 tells a second or 15 pounds weight, etc. So when you're driving, you'll be able to measure this and if your design doesn't meet the requirements, you can quantify what you have to change in order to make it better. The next step is about conducting research. What designs have already solved the problem that you are now trying to solve? So just look up a ton of different designs, write a paragraph or two about what you like about that design, how it could be applicable to your strategy, and what you don't like about the design. You can get research from a bunch of different places. I have a bunch listed on the screen. One thing I'd like to note is the value of reaching out to other teams. Creating connections with other teams early in the season can be a great source of research for your team, and it'll help you know people from your local VEX community. Another thing to note is the value of taking research from real life machinery. I actually have a funny story from my team about this. When I was doing documentation for my team a couple of years ago, one of my teammates sent me a picture of this one construction machinery that he found on the side of the road when he was on vacation and he was like, oh my god, this is so cool. This is how we can use pneumatics on our lift. So we actually included that in our research and of course we told the story there. But I just think that's a great example of being inspired from real life designs. Step four is brainstorming. So what designs can you think of that might work for a possible solution? You can draw, sketch, CAD, even come up with small versions of real parts to get the ideas across to your teammates. You can go by different components, parts of components, full robot designs, you know, whatever works for your team. And make sure to throw all of these ideas into discussion with your teammates since they might have some ideas or critiques that can help you th think through these ideas in more detail. Talking through these ideas will help you identify the areas that are good and the ones that might need some improvement, all so that you can build the best solution for your team. So here you're going to want to sketch CAD and write about each design you consider and come up with, and make sure not to throw out any ideas straight off the bat since they could end up being useful in the future. Step 5 is about prototyping. So this one is about which designs of all the ones brainstormed are actually feasible. So you want to build testable prototypes of all of the feasible designs while trying your best to satisfy all the requirements that you came up with in step 2. You can try to improve the designs as they're being built, 
which is called adaptive prototype development. After building, you're going to want to test each design against the threshold scenarios you made in step two. And then in the next step, you're going to organize all of those results in a matrix. So here, you organize all of the quantifiable results, apply your priority weights, and explain your choice fully in the documentation. Make sure to talk the results over with your teammates before choosing a design, because not everything is in the numbers. One design might be numerically superior, but it could be very complicated to drive, or unreasonably difficult to program, and that might affect which design you choose. Whatever you do, make sure to explain it fully in your engineering notebook. The next step is just developing the solution. So here you want to take all the results and build the design that you chose in the best possible way, paying attention to things like friction, weight, proper supports, and a dice metal if you want to make your robot black or colorful, etc. Just develop the solution in the best way possible, and then you'll have a really robust robot that you can take to comp and it won't break apart immediately. <laughs> The second to last step is test and redesign. This is looking through your robot, testing the robot, and fixing all of the small malfunctions, as well as doing all of your programming, game strategy, and timeline evaluation. Also, make sure that you're writing down all of the stuff in competitions and scrimmages so you can fix all of the small problems that come up. This is probably going to take the majority of your documentation because this step is where you would go back through the design process. The very last step is communicating results. You do this when you make a robot reveal, a notebook reveal, code reveal, etc. Having good communication materials like flyers or a PowerPoint so that you can present super easily is super important. And I'm making another video about judging interviews, but the gist of it is to make sure that you're communicating with your teammates regularly and you know how to put yourself out there. Alright, I'm going to quickly go over Vex's five-step process, which is identifying the problem, brainstorming slash prototyping, choosing the best solution, building it, and then testing and redesigning. There are a lot of things about this five-step process that are really good, and this is what they're going to be judging you on. The nine-step process fits as an expanded, more in-depth version of this, but I've seen a lot of people try to do just the five-step process, and it actually leads to shortcut iteration, and that's why they don't have successful robots, even if they have a really, really good notebook. It doesn't matter how good your notebook is in gameplay, so many builders or programmers choose to ignore and just speed through this five-step engineering design process when building or programming, uh, but then they might do shortcut iteration because they're not familiar with the nine-step process, so having the expanded system allows you to focus on each step in a lot more detail, allowing for higher quality research and documentation. It allows you to identify whether you're going through each step instead of just skipping one or two along the way, which is what I've seen a lot of builders and programmers do, especially, especially when they're pressed for time. Having a timeline or a Gantt chart and actually following it is so uncommon. So the nine step process encourages more specific documentation, and the nine step process does not allow for shortcut iteration, uh, even when your time runs out. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Please share this video with your team. I promise it'll help you guys out. Alright, goodbye friends.